Wow. The ad didn't lie. It's big, all right. Too big. Not for this price. Maybe the ad did lie. Here he is. Let's find out. Mr. Prescott? Yes? Tom Wilson. Uh, and this is my wife, Claire. Oh, how do you do? Hi. Well, what do you think? My husband thinks the price is a typo. <laughs> it's not. Well, then it probably needs a lot of work. It doesn't. Come on, though, see for yourself. What's this? It's a leftover from the old B&B &B sign. This was a bed and breakfast? Oh, years ago, before I bought it. I love prairie style. Oh, me too. Uh, the furniture, though, is largely Victorian. It's furnished? Well, it's a combination of B&B &B furniture and uh, a few of my own pieces. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, all included in the price. When were the other uh, homes torn down? Well, there were no other houses built on this block, just the memorial and uh, the funeral home. And the cemetery. So you, uh, you mentioned on the phone you're from New York? Right. We moved here this summer. My husband started at the high school. What do you teach? Science. So, do you, do you have children? No, it's just the two of us. Ah, uh, you'll find those in every room. The original owner, Dr. Thaddeus, wanted to keep an eye on things after he'd gone. Somebody a pianist? Are you with the local orchestra? Yes. She's being modest. She plays with orchestras all over the state. Then you will be pleased to know that there is a second piano in the sitting room. A player piano. <laughs> Two pianos. Claire, do you mind if I ask you a question? When were you born? I'm 49. No, 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 but, but, but when were you born? The, the, the month and the day. August 18th. Uh, December 30th, I'm 45. The glow are Tiffany originals, and all those murals are hand-painted. You okay, hon? I can't believe it. I've always dreamed of a house like this. It's magical. It is. It is. You know, I, I was born in this very house. I, I spent my, my formative years here. Now I, I just hope it survives. Why wouldn't it? Well, when the B&B &B closed and the house sat empty for several years, there, there was a chance it would be torn down. So I bought it <laughs> in a fit of nostalgia. Now, now they never underestimate the power of nostalgia. But frankly, it, it is a big house. Too big for a single old man whose legs do not like stairs anymore. 
So I, I have a small place on the other side of town. I have health issues too. And lately I, I've started thinking what will happen to this house when I'm gone. I, I don't have any relatives. And so I, I would like to see this go to, to a nice couple who, who will take care of it and, and love it and keep it uh, until they're old. Well? Of course, it's amazing. But do we really need three stories? We're just two people. But the price? Seven bedrooms, a marble shower stall. Tiffany lamps, leaded glass, antique furniture. God only knows what it must cost to heat and cool that place. We'll close off the rooms we're not using. We'll, we'll insulate. We'll have fires in that gorgeous fireplace. This is the house I've been dreaming of my whole life. Sign here. And here. And finally here. Next time we rent a truck, this is bullshit. There won't be a next time. Yeah. We knew a two bedroom apartment could hold so much crap. goddamn light that zapped me. Did you do that? What? <laughs> Nothing. Oh, God. <laughs> the wiring in this place is shit. So we'll get it fixed. Okay. Was this a mistake? What? Buying this. No. What are you talking about? This place needs a lot of work, Claire. It's going to take a lot of time and money just to maintain it. So we'll hire help. With what? That's my point. We're already stretched. I'm here to stay. I am too. I'm just... All right. So we'll be stretched for a while. We'll make it. I'll, I'll take on some extra gigs to, to earn money, okay? I'll teach. Whatever it takes, okay? It's just buyer's remorse. It's normal. All right. <laughs> Hold my hand while I work on the light. <laughs> <laughs> Seventy-five. Something wrong? I didn't think anyone lived here. Oh, yeah, we just uh, just moved in. Keep the change. Thanks. I 
I might leave my piano in storage. I like the feel of this one. You never played so well, Claire. You're gonna wow them at that concert. It's the house. The house, hell. <laughs> damage in this house already. You could give me a hand. <laughs> That's not what I meant. Here's the wedding ring. Oy. We couldn't save it, I'm afraid. How long uh, does Claire have to wear that cast? After the stitches come out? At least eight weeks. I'm a pianist. Will I ever play again? It's really too early to tell. After the cast comes off, you'll have to start physical therapy. See you later. Don't worry about unpacking anything. Okay? Just take it easy. Okay, we've got our sky set up for any night this week and next, a couple of hours after sunset. They think you, but you will see Mars, a dazzling rouge gold, steadily glowing light, brighter than any star in the sky except. Have you been hurt on the job? If so, you need to talk. Want a hug? <laughs>
Tom. Hey, Ken. Hey, how's your wife doing? Uh, it's not good. She can't play the piano, which makes it tough. But uh, at least we got the new house. Oh, you found <laughs> one. Yeah. Yep. I knew you were looking. Mm-hmm. The Thaddeus house. Yeah, you know it? You bought that? Using some of that leftover yard that you have no clue what to do with. And as long as the swatches are the same size, you can use different sized yarn. Hello? Wait! I just wanted to say thank you! You should have told us about the murders. Legally, I wasn't required. Oh, ethically you were. Oh, thank you. Tom, Tom, you bought the house, not, not, not its history. They're inseparable. But if you had never found out about the murders, you would still look at the house with the, the same love that you showed that first day. Please know that it, it was never my intention to be deceitful. I just wanted to ensure that the house survives after I'm gone. Half this town wants it leveled. The house is misunderstood. Yes, something tragic once happened here, okay. But fundamentally, this, this is a positive place. I know this to be true. Then how come in 24 years you never moved in? Tom, listen. It's that noise again. It's like nothing I've ever heard before. It's a pattern. I think it knows Morse code. <laughs> okay. One scratch for yes, two scratches for no. Do you understand? Are you a mouse? Are you a squirrel? Are you a ghost? <laughs> Will I ever play piano again? said, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's turn out that light, Claire. Let's go to bed.
Have you hired a replacement? Yes, but we made it clear the job was temporary. We don't want to lose you, Claire. I wish the other orchestras felt that way. They've all let me go. Well, we won't. Thanks. Have you thought about teaching in the meantime? I've thought about playing. Tom and Claire, please leave a message. Hi, this is Barbara Reynolds from the Gazette. We'd like to do a story on your house, and I wonder if we might meet sometime and talk. If you could give me a call at your earliest convenience, my number is... Hello. Yes, this is Claire. Yes, I'd be happy to meet with you. I'm free now. For 1,500 years, people believed that this is how the sun and planets moved. It's called the geocentric theory because the Earth is in the center of the universe. And no one questioned this because it made perfect sense. Humans are the center of the universe, right? <laughs> then along comes Nicholas Copernicus in the 16th century, and he says, what if we aren't the center of the universe? What if the sun is? So he switches them. And this is what he sees. It's called the heliocentric model. And it's what we now know to be true. He considered all of the facts and came up with a simple, parsimonious explanation. But surveys show that one-fifth, one-fifth of all Americans still believe in the geocentric model. So you covered the murders back then? My first big assignment. It's quite a story for a kid fresh out of college. I did things back then I'd never do today. I snuck in here when the crime scene was still fresh. Right here in this very room lay Mrs. Mueller, the killer's wife. He saved the worst for her. Shot at close range and stabbed 16 times. 16. Oh, hello. Tom, this is Barbara Reynolds from the paper. She's going to do a story on the house. This Christmas Eve marks the 25th anniversary of the Love Nest murders. Mm-hmm. What? It's local history. Now that you're both here, I'd like to get a few photos. Maybe in front of the mantelpiece. Okay, ready? No, thanks.
I know. When we get some money, we'll, we'll just strip the floor. Looks like they already tried. No, wait, there's more. Claire, I've got to get back to work. These nicks. I think they're from the knife. Oh, okay. Claire, come on, please, let's not dwell on this, all right? Hey. Hey. What? Oh, that's the interview. You knew about that. Yeah, but I didn't know you claimed the house was haunted. I didn't. She misquoted me. I said it feels haunted. But you said the H word. You got it out there. Well, you're not quoted, so don't worry about it. But I still have to face my coworkers and the students. The kids will eat it up. Right, yeah. Let's fill their heads full of more supernatural horse shit, as if they're not already deficient in science. What kind of a role model am I when I'm associated with this stuff? What kind of credibility do I have as a scientist? You're not a role model, Tom. You're not a scientist. You're a high school science teacher. Next. Last one, health club dues. Pitch. Wait a minute. When's the last time we went to the gym? Oh, we're still over budget by a lot. What if we, uh, what if we sold one of the cars? Do we really need two cars? What if we sold your car? What about your car? Because my car gets a you know, let's just go through them again. Oh, come on, we've already been through them twice. These bills aren't gonna pay themselves. Of course not. It takes a hard-working man to pay the bills while his dutiful wife sits at home. Willingly, it would seem. What about the teaching that we talked about? You could, you could hold lessons here. You barely left the home since the accident. You, would, you wouldn't even need to leave the house. I don't feel up to it. And keep house at least. What else do you have to do? You're worried about 
canceling a health club membership, then burn some calories by doing something around here instead of sitting around in your pajamas all day. Reading this shit. That's a library book. What if we rented out a, a couple of rooms? The whole third floor, we, we never use it. No way. No, I'm not gonna deal with tenants again. Well, not strangers like before. People we know, friends even. What friends do we have here? Can I help you? I can help you. What can I do for you? Let me help you. How? Sir, what, what do you need? Need? To save your souls. Oh, okay. Oh, no, 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 here now. Thank you. Allow me to cleanse this house. You mean like an exorcism? Essentially. And how much do you charge for this service, essentially? Nothing. In fact, I'd pay you for the privilege. There's a strong presence. How... how much? A hundred dollars. Oh, that sounds reasonable. No, it does not sound reasonable. Two hundred. I don't think you understand what I'm trying to tell you. Three hundred. What? You listen to the man. I'm trying to explain to him that no matter how much he offers, I will not be accepting it. Five hundred dollars. No. A thousand dollars. You know, how about a million dollars? How's that? Is that going to make you happy? Is it going to make everybody happy? How about that, huh? You can come in for a million dollars. You're not understand what I'm telling you. This is not an auction. You need to leave right now, or I am going to call the cops. I warn you. You may die here. Both of you. Go kill a goat. Jesus. Unbelievable. Yeah, I know. Come no, on. you. Hello? We can't pay our bills, and you turn down a thousand dollars. Are you nuts? You know, that newspaper article of yours was bad enough. I mean, word gets out we're welcoming these weirdos, and they're never going to stop coming. What's it going to hurt? It's just for a little while until I can play again. We're not going there, Claire. We're not going to... We're not going to make money off of somebody else's misery. If I can't get this thing out of the ground, I have a feeling we're going to be repainting it every week. That sucker's in there solid. I can't get it out myself. Wish I could help. <laughs> Give me a sip. Hey, I've been thinking maybe we should have some people over this weekend. A party. Who'd you have in mind? Coworkers. Probably time we start making some friends in this town. What do you think? Yeah. Hi. I read about you in the newspaper, and I just want to say that I totally believe you because I've always felt this place had a special, like, vibe. And just standing here on the porch, I can feel it. And I was wondering if you might consider letting me look around the place, just, just for a little bit. I can pay you. I don't have much, but I can pay you something. We can work something out.
Well, we got plenty of booze. Have you seen the laptop? I can't find it anywhere. I took it to work. Well, I'm gonna need it. Haven't you seen enough? Man, I never thought I'd set foot in this place. What's it like, Tom, living in a, in a house of horrors? I'd never notice if certain people didn't keep reminding me. How many victims were there? Five, six? I don't know. Why don't you ask Claire? She knows. Yeah, no kidding. She knows all about those murders. Say, did you see the blood stains? Man, creepy. My uncle went to school with Christine Mueller. Said he always knew someday her husband would snap. Uh, okay, dear. I think everyone's sufficiently freaked out, so the <laughs> show's over. God, this is ghastly. Mm. Well, I do have the uncensored photos if you're interested. She's, she's not interested. Watch. Oh! Oh! oh. 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 I'm sorry, oh. honey. Here. I, I'm, well, yeah, I need it. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, Thanks, yeah. I'm I think I got... Still getting used to having this yeah, on my I, arm. I okay. Oh, uh, okay. 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 Uh, it's all right. It's all right. Hey, uh, why don't we roll back this carpet? Could you do that for me? And uh, go ahead and cover that up, would you? Well, let's just talk about something a little more pleasant than this. If we can. Sure, sure. Thanks, Claire. Can you do that for me? Hey, you're up early. You going somewhere? I thought I'd make copies of this and post it around town. Hey, Claire, this is great. Not very professional, but someone took the laptop. Top drawer of my dresser. So you didn't take it to school. <laughs> hey, uh... Give me some of those flyers to close this school, okay? You're gonna be full up with students before you know it. Excuse me, where's the archives department? Uh, the second floor. We have tons of clippings about the murders. We also have lots of stuff about Rexford Thaddeus, the original owner of the house, if you're interested. Yes, please. In my opinion, he's a lot more interesting than those murders. Somebody should write a book about him. The house, it's history before the murders. Dr. Thaddeus, <laughs> I've been reading about him. 
I think I even had a dream about him. <laughs> He's fascinating. And you grew up there in the house with him. You were a son. Yes. S-U-N. Was he your father, your biological father? No. My mother was expecting me before we arrived there. So it was a home for unwed mothers? It was more than that, Claire. It was a, it was a refuge. It was a sanctuary. It was a garden of love. And all of the women were named after flowers. But in the pictures, all of them are dressed alike. It looks like some um, kind of harem. Were they all his wives? Oh, well, no, 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 But some of them looked very young. Some of them were very young. But, but from what I read, some people believed he had powers. He seemed like a warlock. No, 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 he seemed like a, a sex therapist for the locals, selling virility medicines with a house full of women. How did he get away with it? How did he break all of these taboos and not get run out of town? Charisma. Hmm? It, it was all powerful, Claire. He was, he was a god on earth. And, now, I wanted you to have his house because he wanted you to have it. This son is dying, but well, since the desecration, nobody but a flower like yourself can save my father's house. Desecration? You mean the murders? The news stories said the killer left a snuff video. What do you know about that? You don't want to see that. My father's house should celebrate life. I didn't expect you so soon. Obviously. Who's the cowboy, Claire? Claire? A tourist. He was traveling through. He knew about the house and stopped. So you gave him a tour? And he paid very well. You charged him? How much? Him? A lot. I use a sliding scale. Sliding scale. So you've given these tours before. Right. How many tours, Claire? Let me put it this way. We can pay all of our bills this month. We agreed we weren't going to do that. I didn't agree. By the way, Halloween is coming up. No. I've got it all worked out. The tours will be very tasteful. Reservations only. We can hire a rent-a-cop for security. You won't have to do anything, Tom. It's once a year. People are going to come anyway. We, we might as well do it right. And we need the money. Claire, in the amount of time you spent working on that, you could have found yourself a music student or two. I can't play, Tom. I don't want to teach. There's something on fire out there. Ah, the old flaming sack of shit.
Trick or treat. Thank you. Well, we had our first children of the evening, but I gave them some candy and they went away. No, they're still on the porch. What are they doing? Guys, I need you to leave, please. Aww. You'll scare the kids. What kids? Come on, you're loitering on private property. Hold up, guys. Come on, guys, just get in your truck and go. The sidewalk's city property, dude. Fine, then I'll call the cops and see how they feel about you loitering on city property. Yeah, well, your house should have been torn down a long time ago, you fucker. You better put on some coffee. Something tells me I'm going to be dealing with assholes like that all night long. Well, if you listen to me, and we did things right.
Yes? Hello, ma'am. Uh, this is gonna sound strange, but we were wondering if... Well... You would like a tour of the house? Yeah. And this is the room where Peter and Linda Roberts stayed. But Linda ran away and she was killed downstairs, right? No, Christine was killed downstairs. Peter and Linda were killed together in this room. That's right. Where exactly? Linda, right here. Peter, here. I'm home. What brought this on? What was that? Who's up there? <laughs> oh shit! Give them their money back. She didn't... She didn't charge us. It's their anniversary. Get out. It was their anniversary. They were sweet kids. I thought it was a nice gesture. Tom calls that crazy. There was more to it than that. And yeah, I call that crazy. The Claire I used to know would never have done that. The Claire you used to know. She's changed. Do you think you have Claire? Well, I think I'm finally starting to feel alive again, like I did before the accident. I just don't understand how fixating on gruesome murders can make someone feel alive again. We live in a very special house. It has a fascinating past, and the murders are only a part of that. The house has an aura about it. I try to share my interest in it with him, but he doesn't want to hear it. What I don't want is to open our house up to a bunch of crazy people. They're not people. crazy. They're, they're people who are looking for something, who, who don't believe that everything that happens can be explained away rationally. Yeah, I don't believe in magic, okay? I don't believe in auras. I believe in rational solutions. That's why we're here. Come on. Let's talk about the accident. I gave up a good career playing professionally in New York. Claire, and I... we talked about this before the move. Tom, let her finish. I moved halfway across the country where I don't know a soul. I finally start to get established and, and then this. I lost everything. 
Tom expects me to just move on, like I'm not allowed to grieve because I just broke a hand. And now I, I finally find something that makes me happy. It makes me feel alive again, and he wants to shut it down. How do you feel, Tom, that Claire has made sacrifices for you? Yes. And do you feel like you've made sacrifices for her? They just want to spend one night in the house taking readings. We'll supervise the whole thing. They'll give us 5,000 up front, and then if they capture something on camera and the footage airs, it's another five. Oh, think about it, Tom. 5,000 minimum. 10,000 if they find something. Well, they'll find something. They always find something. Good. And what if they do find something? Aren't you even curious? Remember what the marriage counselor said. Said yes. Yeah, yeah. Hi. We're going to use a variety of scientific techniques to look for activity in the house. So Josh is going to be on video, of course. I'm going to man the EMF, and we're also going to record audio to look for EVP. EVP? Electronic voice phenomena. All right, dude, we're ready to go. Oh, excuse me. Scientific techniques, my ass. <clears throat> I thought you were leaving. I am. But you had to criticize first. Yep. All right, quiet, please. And rolling. We're here in the living room of the Thaddeus House, scene of a brutal mass murder 25 years ago that shocked the Midwest. In the years since, rumors have circulated about hauntings. But until now, these claims have never been scientifically analyzed. We plan to change all that tonight. Join us, won't you? Okay. Good job, bro. Uh, we'll be ready for the walkthrough in about a minute. Well, I'll see you tomorrow morning, Claire. Hey, good luck, guys. I know you'll find something. Tell us where we are. Uh, well, originally this floor was used as bedrooms for the children, but later Dr. Thaddeus used it for his laboratory. Oh, shh, shh, shh. What was that? Dude, are you cold? I'm freezing. No, I'm sweating my ass off. Claire, what about you? I'm a little cold, I guess. Morning. Still at it? Okay. Dude, check this out. Dude, take any EMF reading. Oh. Well, your own body can trigger that, so what kind of units are you measuring? Milligauss, Gauss, what? Just keep watching. Josh, stay on the meter, all right? You okay? Stay on. Oh, dude! Dude! As you can clearly see, I am nowhere near the meter. Something else is moving that. Yeah, an electromagnetic field. The way this old house is wired, that doesn't surprise me. Dude, and then look, I don't I... waste your breath on him, guys. Nothing's gonna convince him. We're not afraid of you! Show us another sign! Yes? Hello. My name is Lily Blackwell. I used to live in this house. Well, hello. I'm Claire Wilson. When was that exactly? Oh, very long time ago. Dr. Thaddeus took me in when I was a young woman. Just a girl, really. Please come in. We've only been here a short while. Oh, I know. Preska told me.
Oh, you didn't remove them, bless you. And what do you think of Claire Rexford? <gasps> what? Rexford says he's going to give you something wonderful. And he says not to worry. You will play again. Would you like to look around? Very much. May we start at my old room upstairs? Lead the way. How long have you been a psychic? I prefer the term sensitive. All my life, I think. But it took Dr. Thaddeus to nurture it. What was he like? How much time do you have? <laughs> we were the unwanted. And he took us in. He gave us power. He was a father, a lover, a teacher, a prophet. Were you here when he killed himself in the backyard? He didn't kill himself. Men kill themselves. He ascended. It was horrible, beautiful, all at the same time. While we prepared for his 80th birthday, he cut his hair, collected his own blood, and began to make the eyes. Because he knew we'd need him to watch over us when he was gone. He finished the final eye on the eve of his birthday. He kissed us all goodnight. He whispered in my ear that I'd be the one to share his bed the next night. I couldn't sleep, of course. As I lay in bed, staring at the moon, thinking about how much I loved him, flame began to flicker in the reflection of the glass. First I thought it was my energy making it happen. And then I saw smoke. I looked out the window and I saw Rexford had lit himself on fire. We all ran out to him. And we could tell from his posture and from the stones and the symbols around him that he was transforming. And we all understood, Claire, we all understood. We laughed, and we cried and breathed him in. Watched him turn into a million little stars, rising to paradise. What man has that kind of will? What is it, Claire? You've been wanting to ask me something. When I was showing you around, you sometimes seemed troubled. Were you picking up other, oh, I don't know the word, impressions about the murders? You mean the desecration? Yes. I sense an absolution needed. There's something wrong in this house. We have to make it right. I keep seeing images of someone fleeing the house in terror. A child, but grown. Someone who's still haunted by what happened here. A survivor.
Claire. Where are you? What the hell is this note? I'm taking a trip to Chicago, that's all. To meet with an author? Look, I've got to go. Bye. <laughs> Good Christ, you want to hold a seance with JC? <laughs> How much you aim to make off this? Nothing. No one's getting paid. We're doing this to help JC. Now please, how can I reach her? As I said on the phone, I promised JC never to reveal her whereabouts. At least give JC the choice. Don't decide for her. Why should I break my promise? More coffee? Sure I can't get you some neat? No. Yeah, wait a sec. JC? Do I know you? No. How did you find me? It wasn't easy. Can we talk? Just five minutes. I drove cross country to see you. Are you kidding me? I know how all this sounds. If someone had told me this story a year ago, I would have laughed. But you're not laughing. You know it's not so crazy after all. I can't go back there. But if, if there was a chance it could work. Imagine, JC. Imagine being able to communicate with them again. To tell them everything that you have wanted to say for the past 25 years. Why don't you stay out here for a little while? As long as you need to. I need to go inside for just a minute and then I'll be right back. Welcome back. Tom, I know I haven't explained everything to you. Anything. You haven't explained anything. I learned about the seance from your friend here. She assumed I knew all about it, but why would I? I mean, I only live here, right? I'll be in the living room with the others. It's nearly dark enough to begin. I didn't explain over the phone because I knew you'd shoot it down. There's no money involved. I'm doing this to help JC. You don't have to take part. Oh, I won't.
Can I get you anything? You don't have to do this. You don't? Welcome, my dear. It's a pleasure to finally meet you. Please, have a seat. Thank you, Tom. That's all. I'd like to stay with JC. You can't. We can't do this with five people. Isn't that right, Lily? That's right. Four or six, not five. Five symbolizes the pentagram. What if I joined? That would make six. Very well. All right, then. I'll get two more chairs. We need to draw a single drop of blood from someone. If none of you volunteers, I'll draw it from myself. I volunteer. Mr. Prescott. Place your hands flat on the table, with your little fingers touching those of your neighbors. The circle must stay unbroken at all times. Now concentrate on the blood in the oil. As Mr. Prescott leads. We are gathered here out of love and respect for our sister, JC. I, I am now addressing the spirits of her loving family, her Mother Linda, Father Peter, Brother William. You, you were taken from J.C. much too early. She, she would like to communicate with you, any or, or, or all of you. And, and we humbly and respectfully ask that Lily be the vessel through which you may speak. Won't you please join us? You are welcome here in this room. Please, show yourselves. JC! JC! How's kiddo? Billy? It's my brother Billy. He used to call me kiddo. Stay with us, Billy. Tell us more. I miss you, JC. Mom and Dad do too. They're with you, Billy. Sure. We're always together now. <laughs> Linda and, and Peter, you, won't you join us? You, you are welcome here in this room. Casey, it's Daddy. I love you, sweetie. We can't wait to see you again. I love you, Daddy. I'm so sorry, Daddy. I'm so sorry I ran. You had to. I should have stayed with you and Mom and Billy. No, Jace. It had to be this way. Jace? Mother, is that you? Mom? Please forgive me for running away. It's not your fault, Jace. You had no choice. It wasn't your time to die. We had to die. It was our time. What the fuck are you feeding this girl? For Christ's sake. Stop it. Uh, they're gone. I've lost them. Wait, you've got to bring them back. I'm sorry, dear. No, please bring them back. JC, there is no one to get back. Your family doesn't inhabit this house. I'm sorry, and they weren't killed because it was their time. I know you need a reason for all of this, JC, but there isn't one. It's not fair. It's not right, but it is the truth, honey. 
<laughs> you son of a bitch! You ruined it! They were here! I was talking to them! And you ruined <laughs> You ass. This wasn't about you, Tom. This was to help JC, not try to convert you. You call this help? This magic show? It's closure. Ah, oh, closure. Yeah, I see. I guess that gives you carte blanche to mess with that girl. She's disappeared. I'll drive around and look for her. Maybe she's gone back to the motel. I'll come too. Haven't you fucked things up enough? Haven't you? Keep calling that diner in California to see if she shows up for work. I'd like that number too. I can handle it. Fine. Anything else? Yeah, I'm moving out. I want a divorce. I don't know you anymore, Claire. What about the house? What about it? I'm keeping it. Good luck, Claire. Good luck.
Oh, you must be Mary Ann. Hello. Hi. This is Victoria and Steve. They'll be taking the tour nice with you. Familiar. Now, before we begin, and uh, as I mentioned on the phone, the tour does contain some disturbing content, so if you're easily offended, now's the time to back out. I'll give you a full refund, of course. No takers? All right, let's begin. Twenty-five years ago, this month on Christmas Eve, a brutal mass murder desecrated this historic house, which at the time was known as the Love Nest Bed and Breakfast. It certainly ranks as the most notorious crime this area has ever witnessed. Now, what most people don't know about this house is its long history before those murders. That's why I started these tours to present the entire fascinating history of the Thaddeus House, a local treasure that's undeserving of its awful reputation. Marianne, please don't, don't go in there yet. That part of the tour comes later. <laughs> this needs to be done in order. You, you need the proper context. Shame on you! Shame on you! Christine was my sister. I'm sorry. She lived 36 years. And all anyone ever talks about is that last minute of her life. The new owners of a local house with a tragic past are cashing in on its notoriety. And that's upsetting a resident with ties to the tragedy. The Thaddeus House, site of a well-known mass murder decades ago, recently reopened as an unusual museum. Although, some call it nothing more than a freakish house of horrors that exploits its infamy for money. Marianne Douglas, whose sister Christine Mueller was murdered in the massacre, is picketing the house. News 24 reporter Rick Penny caught up with her there. It's like she died twice. Her body 25 years ago and her legacy now. There's nothing in there about the vibrant, loving person she was. Just a corpse. Claire Wilson, owner of the house and organizer of the tours, declined an on-camera interview. Records indicate the house is co-owned by her husband, Thomas, a science teacher at DHS, but he could not be re- Tom, come on in. Well, have a seat. The judge awarded her temporary possession of the house pending a formal hearing. Well, that's just until the divorce settlement, right? She'll lose that house eventually. Well, in this case, because of the circumstances, I doubt it. Circumstances what, that she's nuts? No, because she's pregnant. I'm sorry, I didn't realize. Well, that's not possible. We were told she couldn't get pregnant. Well, I'm just telling you what her lawyer told me. And her doctor confirmed it. Look, the house is hers, Tom, at least for now. I am drafting a trial brief that uh, asks the court to order her to pay more of the mortgage payments, but I, I, I just don't know if that'll work.
can't talk right now. I'm expecting company soon. Why didn't you tell me, Claire? Because I knew how you'd react. Because I'm concerned about you. Claire, you're in no condition to have a child. You're unemployed. You're recovering from a serious injury and from a deep depression. I have recovered. I've started playing again. Maybe not concert quality, but I'm playing. And I've never felt better. It's a serious, risky pregnancy, Claire. You're 49 years old. The chance of birth defects... What? You've had the test to rule those out? I don't have to. Everything will be all right. And you know that how? What's, what's your evidence, Claire? This crap? You've got to have those tests. I will make the appointment and I'll go with you. Everything will be okay. This pregnancy is a miracle. My baby will be perfect. Well, it's my baby too. Right. Claire, it is my child. Biologically, of course. Spiritually, he has a different father. Oh, okay, all right. Claire. Claire, please. Let, let's just get out of here right now. Let's go someplace else and talk about this, okay? I told you I can't. I'm expecting company. Who? Are you really interested? Yeah. Lily and my midwife are coming to celebrate Modrinik with me. S celebrate what? Mother Night. <laughs> Don't worry. We're not sacrificing animals or practicing black magic. It's a ritual on the eve of the solstice to celebrate the return of the sun. The sun? The sun in the sky. The sun growing within me. I'm already sure it's a boy. <laughs> I can feel it. Look, I know you don't believe in miracles, but there's no other word to describe what's happening to me. All those years we tried. This is a miracle, and it couldn't have happened any place else. Claire, you know what? I don't care what you believe as long as it only affects you, but this doesn't. And we need to talk seriously about how we're going to manage this. You don't need to manage anything. I'm prepared to raise him without you. Well, I'm prepared to raise him or her without you. But I don't want to. Claire, please. Please. Just agree to leave this place. This is my home. I will support completely you and the child this is where i belong but I... if you choose to stay i will fight you for sole custody with every resource i've got and with your murder tours and your weird ceremonies you know i'm gonna win 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 don't you realize it's bigger than that it's bigger than anything you can imagine. Claire, there is no grand scheme here. There's no cosmic significance to any of this. And there's no one there. I know a lot of people who would disagree. You're alone and you're pregnant, Claire. They come from all over to be here. They come to see that! That's what they come for! At first, maybe. But I've turned away from that. Now the tours focus on the goodness of the house. Yeah, and people pay for that. That satisfies their morbid curiosity. The tour of a good house. How's that working for you? Where's the furniture, Claire? You sell it to pay the bills? I share with them how it's changed my life. It's changed your life, all right. Thank you.
can't have my child raised in this place. So I'll see you in court. Turning and turning in the widening gyre, the falcon cannot hear the falconer. Things fall apart. The center cannot hold. Mere anarchy is loosed on the world. The blood-dimmed tide is loosed. And everywhere, the ceremony of innocence is drowned. Surely some revelation is at hand. Surely some second coming is at hand. A second coming. Hardly are those words out when a vast image of the spiritus mundi troubles my sight. Somewhere in sands of the desert, a shape with lion body and the head of a man, a gaze blank and pitiless as the sun, the darkness drops again. But now I know that 20 centuries of stony sleep were vexed to nightmare by a rocking cradle. And what rough beast, its hour come round at last, slouches toward Bethlehem to be born. Cool camera. What are you doing? What are you saying? Thank <laughs> you.